Hello everyone, you are watching Sahib Academy. If you like our videos, then please subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell icon for the regular updates and also follow us on Instagram, Sahib Academy. Now let's go to the video. Hi everyone, this is the second video of labor costing chapter. And in the previous first video of labor costing, what we have done is we have seen how to calculate labor turnover rate. Yes, what is meant by labor turnover rate, how to calculate it with the various methods, replacement method, separation method and flux method. Yes, we have seen all that. So if you want to watch that video, then please go to the description below and click the link. Right. So now in this video, what are we going to do is in the second video of labor costing, we are going to see the different methods that are available to calculate the remuneration that is given to the workers yeah how to calculate the wages what are the different methods to calculate the wages and the bonus that is given to the employees yeah the workers to motivate them yeah now that we are going to see in the different video this bonus thing okay in this video especially we are going to focus on this part only okay right so see here we have three different methods of remuneration time rate system piece rate system and bonus systems so if you go into them deeper then you will find we have got simple time rate system yeah but in the piece rate we have got different different sub methods yeah we have got straight piece rate system taylor's differential piece rate system merrick differential piece rate system and we have also got gentas bonus plan yeah now this gentas bonus plan is not entirely a piece rate system it is the combination of piece rate as well as time rate okay we'll come to that later don't worry and then we have got bonus systems yeah how to calculate bonus the incentives that is given to the workers yeah we have got halsey premium plan halsey wear premium plan rowan plan okay now in the third video we are going to focus on the bonus systems okay now in this video we are going to only focus on the time rate and piece rate so see it's very simple time rate it's very simple see here earnings is equal to hours worked into rate per hour how many hours a worker has worked into what is the rate that is to be given per hour you just multiply those two together you will get the earnings that is to be paid to that worker for example if a worker has worked for five hours five hours yeah and let's say the rate per hour is 100 then simply just multiply them together five hours into 100 then you will get 500 500 would be the earnings that is to be given to the worker who has worked for five hours simple as that yeah the earning will be based on the time basis how many hours he has worked into the rate that is there fine then we have got straight piece rate simple straight piece rate okay this thing yeah so see here earnings is equal to unit produced it is based on the production how many pieces he has produced how many units he has produced that worker into rate per unit understood unit produced into rate per unit what is the rate to be given yeah what is the rate that is there per unit produced just multiply them two together for example see here Suresh worked for 50 hours okay and produced 300 units Suresh produced 300 units and the wage rate per unit is rupees 5 simple just multiply them two together you will get his earnings Suresh earnings right on the basis of straight piece rate he has produced 300 units number of units produced yeah unit produced is 300 rate per unit is rupees 5 so 300 into 5 simple 5 into 3 15 then 00, 0 1500 would be the earnings of Suresh on the basis of straight piece rate system so this is how straight piece rate system is it's very simple yeah how many pieces he has produced into the rate that has to be given per unit simple and time basis also very simple but then these are very simple things then we have Taylor's Merrick so let's focus on those two okay let's go to Taylor's and Merrick now here we have the Taylor's differential piece rate system so now let's understand how are the wages or the remuneration is calculated under the system right so first let's understand the mindset of this person Taylor right because Taylor is the person who created the system right Taylor's differential piece rate system yes so now according to Taylor there are only two types of workers efficient worker and the other one is inefficient worker and he says that efficient worker should be encouraged by you know giving him more remuneration 120 percent of normal piece rate and an inefficient worker right he should be penalized yeah this person should be penalized by giving less remuneration 80% of normal piece rate so now whatever normal piece rate is there in the factory or in that company yeah whatever now let's say in this example let's take the same example Suresh example right here the normal piece rate was rupees 5 so now if we employ this system 
Taylor's differential piece rate system here in the case of Suresh, right? So now, see here, if rupees 5 is the normal piece rate, rupees 5 is the normal piece rate, and let's say efficient worker, right? Now, the efficient worker will get 120% of normal piece rate. Simple, 5 into 1.20. Yeah, that's how you are going to calculate. So, the piece rate that will be given to the efficient worker would be rupees 6. Okay, so whatever units he has produced into rupees 6. That's how you are going to calculate the earnings of an efficient worker. And then, earnings of an inefficient worker, what are you going to do? What piece rate are you going to give him? 80% of normal piece rate. And we are assuming we are taking an example that normal piece rate is rupees 5, right? So into 0 0.80, 80 percent of normal piece rate. So rupees 4. Rupees 4 will be the piece rate that would be given to this inefficient worker. Less earnings, less remuneration. That's how he will be penalized, this inefficient worker, right? So this is how Taylor's differential piece rate system is. Here we differentiate between the efficient worker and inefficient worker. Efficient worker will get more, inefficient worker will get less. So now the big question is how to check the efficiency? How to know who is efficient and who is inefficient? It's very simple. See here, for that you have to understand what is standard production. Yeah. If a worker meets the standard production, if he achieves the standard production, then he is called efficient worker and he does not, if he does not achieve the standard production, then he is called inefficient worker so now if your employer tells you to produce 500 units of something yeah then that's called standard production what your employer told you to do that is your standard production 500 units for example but now what you actually do that is your actual production so let's say if you produce only 400 units less than what your employer told you to do standard production 500 units then obviously you are an inefficient worker because you did not achieve the standard production your actual production is less than the standard production yeah so you will be called as inefficient worker and you will get 80 percent of normal piece rate yeah so this is how is taylor's differential piece rate system simple only there are two types of workers and 120 percent and 80 percent simple as that you get it right it's very simple you just have to compare the actual production with the standard production and if the worker achieves the standard production then 120 percent of normal piece rate if he does not achieve standard production it is less than the standard production then he will get 80 percent of normal piece rate and then whatever units he has produced just multiply with that normal piece rate i mean the adjusted one right so that is how taylor's differential piece rate system is right and then we have got merrick piece rate system right so now see here merrick differential piece rate system under this method three piece rates are applied with different levels of performance now here also we have three different parameters yeah depending upon the performance of the employees you know the piece rate are you know calculated so see here performance if the performance of an employee is less than 83 percent not 83 percent 82 81 less than 83 percent then he will get normal piece rate yeah, in this Suresh example, he will get rupees 5 as his piece rate. And then whatever units he has produced, you will multiply with that piece rate. Yeah, he will get normal piece rate. The person who has the efficiency, I mean the performance, below 83%. And then the employee, the worker who has performance of 83% to 100%, okay, 83% to 100%, then he will get 110% of normal piece rate. What is 110%? It's simple. If 5 is the normal piece rate, into 1.10 yeah that is 110 percent so that is equal to how much 5.5 yeah so in that example he will get 5.5 as his piece rate 5.5 rupees and then if the performance of that worker is more than 100 percent not 100 percent 101 102 103 yeah more than 100 percent then he will get 120 percent of normal piece rate simple as that yeah here we have three different parameters okay three different piece rates simple Depending upon the performance, you have to go along. Simple. So this is Merrick differential piece rate system. And here this is Taylor's differential piece rate system. Now let's solve problem on these two. Now here we have the Taylor's problem. See here. From the following particulars, calculate the earnings of Mr. Sunil for a week under Taylor differential piece rate system. Fine. We have been given the information. And we have to calculate the earnings of this Mr. Sunil. So see here. Number of working hours per week is 48 hours. 
right and then we have got time rate normal wage per hour rupees 24 okay what is the normal wage per hour that is given and then standard time per unit 20 minutes now what is the standard time per units now we have seen standard output yeah whatever the output that the worker has to achieve yeah what the employer tells the worker to do that is the standard production we know that but now what is standard time see here in your exam right how you are allotted three hours to complete your exam right your examiner expect you to complete your exam within three hours isn't it maximum three hours similarly what happens in the factory in the company also the employer they allot time to their employees their workers that you have to complete the production of one unit in a certain time that is called standard time generally all the workers are expected to complete their one unit of production in this case here 20 minutes yeah employer expects that his worker would complete the production of that one unit in 20 minutes okay that is what is standard time how much time is allotted to complete the production of one unit that is called standard time per unit understood simple so standard time per unit is given 20 minutes now why is that given we'll come to that then we have got actual output 156 units okay what this mr sunil has produced in a week that is actual output right what he has actually produced actual production is 156 units actual for a week fine now the problem arises here is here we have not been given the piece rate the normal piece rate is not given we have given we have been given time rate per hour yeah time rate is given normal wage per hour we have not been given the piece rate we don't have the normal piece rate and we also don't have the standard production but that's not a problem we can easily calculate standard production see here how we can do that yeah but first let's focus on the piece rate we don't have the piece rate also right so see to calculate the piece rate what you have to do is see here see here piece rate is equal to time rate per hour yeah whatever that is the time rate that is given in the question you have to take that and divide it by the standard output per hour standard output per hour what is the time rate and how much standard output how much a worker is supposed to complete how many units he has to complete in an hour so now we have time rate that is 24 but we don't have standard output per hour anywhere in this question but we have standard time so with the standard time per unit we can easily calculate the standard output per hour see here standard output per hour how will you do that see here they have said 20 minutes are allotted to each worker to complete one unit yeah so in an hour in an hour a worker should complete how many units three units simple common sense think properly 20 minutes comes three times in an hour isn't it in 60 minutes how many 20 minutes are there 3 20 minutes 20 20 20 that is equal to 60 right so standard output per hour is 60 minutes divided by 20 see here 60 divided by 20 that is equal to 3 isn't it so 3 units is the standard production the standard output per hour in an hour a worker is supposed to complete the production of 3 units that is standard output per hour so just take that time rate divided by standard output per hour yeah time rate is 24 rupees yeah and then standard output per hour is 3 we just calculated that right so 24 divided by 3 you will get the piece rate 24 divided by 3 that is the 8 right so 8 will be the piece rate rupees 8 fine we got the piece rate but then we don't have the standard output we have to check the efficiency of sunil right whether he is inefficient or efficient so to do that what do we do we compare the standard production with the actual production now we have the actual production that is 156 but we don't have the standard production do we no we don't have but we have now standard output per hour easily we can calculate it standard output also right if you have standard output per hour then just multiply it with the total hours that is 48 you will get the whole standard output isn't it simple as that see here standard output is equal to in a week we have 48 hours 48 working hours right so 48 hours and we know in an hour three units are supposed to be done yeah so in 48 hours 144 units are supposed to be done yeah employer tells the employee that you have to produce how much 144 units yeah that's the thing here standard output will be 48 hours into 3 
that is equal to 144 so 144 units is the standard output the standard production understood yes so now we have actual production yeah we have the actual output and the standard output also so now what you have to do actual output standard output, just compare them actual output is more than the standard output the standard production yeah actual output is 156 so he is efficient so if he's efficient then you have to encourage him by giving 120 percent of normal piece rate and normal piece rate is 8 so 120 percent of that is 9.60 simple as that differentiated piece rate differential piece rate right 8 into 120 percent why 120 percent because he has achieved the standard production right so that is why we have to give him more he's efficient worker so 8 into see here simple calculation 8 into 120 percent 1.20 that is equal to the decimals 9.6 9.60 yeah that is the rate the piece rate that should be given to mr sunil understood so his earnings would be 156 units whatever units he has produced into the piece rate the differentiated piece rate, the differential piece rate 9.60 okay so 156 into 9.60 that is equal to how much 1497.6 simple so that much would be paid to the mr sunil simple first what we did was we didn't have piece rate we had to calculate the piece rate how time rate divided by standard output per hour simple 24 divided by 3 but we didn't have the standard output per hour also but that we can easily understand and calculate see here standard time is given yeah a worker is supposed to complete the production of one unit in 20 minutes then in hour he will be completing how much three units standard output per hour right 60 divided by 20 three units yes so 24 divided by 3 that is equal to 8 8 was the piece rate and then standard output in a week how will you calculate that in a week we have 48 working hours just multiply it with the standard output per hour that is three units so 48 hours into three units that is 144 units that's your standard output once you get the standard output you can easily compare standard output and actual output yeah if actual output is more he is efficient if actual output is less than the standard output then he is inefficient efficient gets 120 percent of piece rate inefficient gets you know 80 percent of piece rate we know that right yes yes so that's what we did and the earning simple how many units he has produced and the piece rate 9.60 just multiply them together you will get the earnings right simple right yes so this is how you have to do the taylor's differential piece rate system now this is a bit complicated problem i chose it because you know with one problem you have to understand all the concept yeah if the piece rate is not given how to calculate the piece rate if you know standard output is not given and standard time is given then how to calculate the standard output by calculating first the standard output per hour and then the whole standard output yeah so this is a very you know tactical problem okay all right then now let's go to the merit problem now here we have the merit problem see here from the following particulars calculate the total earning of three workers under merit differential piece rate system fine so the first thing that we have been given is the piece rate see here normal rate per hour rupees five per unit per unit this is the piece rate okay this is not time rate by mistakely they have given us per hour this is not time rate okay this is the piece rate normal piece rate is rupees five okay and then we have been given the standard production per hour 10 units okay and then they have said in a day there are eight working hours why have they told us this because we can calculate the total standard production of eight hours in eight hours what is the standard production simple just multiply those two together we need the total standard production to calculate the performance of these employees these workers right so eight hours into 10 units yeah standard production per hour you will get the total standard production see here 8 into 10 that is equal to 80 so 80 units is the standard production the total standard production in whole day in whole eight hours working day fine right then they have told us a produce 70 units b produce 90 c produce 65 units d produce 110 units fine so now what do we do in merit differential piece rate system we calculate the performances of each of the employees and depending upon in which parameter they fall in we take the piece rates yeah if it is less than 83 normal piece rate yeah you know that it's very simple yes 
so how do you calculate the performances see it's very easy the formula to calculate the performance is very simple how much output how much they have produced actually divided by the standard output what they were supposed to produce yeah actual output divided by standard output now actual output of a is how much 70 units so 70 divided by 80 what is 80 standard output we just calculated that right i showed you in calculator 80 into 10 standard output yeah he was supposed to produce how much 80 he produced 70 so 70 divided by 80 into 100 yeah it will be in percentages the performance so 87.5 is his performance and then b's level of performance same thing actual output divided by standard output b produced 90 units so 90 divided by 80 he produced more then of course his performance is more so 90 divided by 80 into 100 112.5 percent simple then c's level of performance same thing actual output divided by standard output 65 divided by 80 65 is his production actual production standard production is 80 into 100 the percentage are 81.25 percent see that yeah so this is how you have to do it same thing with the d also right then you have to see in which parameter they fall in yeah in which category they fall in now a fall in which category this a person this a employee he falls in the second category 87.5 percent so see here 83 to 100 percent the second category the second category workers will get 110 percent of normal piece rate so a's earnings 70 he has produced 70 piece rate is 5 isn't it the piece rate it's given in the question rupees 5 piece rate is 5 yeah the units he has produced 70 into piece rate into what into the percentage what is the percentage 110 i'll just show you one see here a he has produced 70 yeah 70 and then the piece rate is 5 yeah the piece rate is 5 but then in which category he falls in he falls in the second category so he has to get 110 percent of normal piece rate so normal piece rate is 5 yeah so into 1 point what 1.10 that is 110 percent so 385 will be his earnings see here a's earnings will be rupees 385 and the same things you have to do with the rest all the employees so b's earnings how much did he produce he produced actually 90 90 the normal piece rate is rupees 5 yeah but then in which category he comes in b 112.5 so that is the third category the best category right above 100 percent 120 percent of normal piece rate yeah so into 1.20 that is 120 percent right so if you multiply his earnings are 540 rupees simple right you understood that right it's very very easy okay so that's it okay yeah so that's what you have to do with the c and the d yeah easy right so it's very simple you just have to know how to calculate the performance actual output divided by standard output then it's all parameters right yeah this thing easy yeah okay then now we'll see gen task in another video okay because we have exceeded our time now yeah we will see the Gantas plan in another video.